Welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at how to make box plots using views. This is a way to represent statistical distributions where we're trying to show the outliers, the inner quartile range, mean, median, things like that, all inside of a single plot. It's a standard statistical plot and views lets us make it directly from a column of data or a column of values. So with that, let's just jump right in and see how it's done. I've already opened views, and for the data, we just have Dow return, down year, NASDAQ return, NASDAQ year, S&P 500 returns, and S&P 500 year. This data is here, and so essentially I'm looking at the fractional return each year for these three different stock market indices. And actually to make a dot plot, we don't need the years at all. The years are just there to help us think through what's going on, but all we want to do is represent, let's say, the distribution of returns for this S&P 500 over the time for which this has been tracked. And we want to do that using a box plot. So going back to views, it's actually fairly easy. Once we're operating within a graph, we can add directly a widget for handling box plots. Just like when we wanted to have scatter plots, we use this XY or if we wanted to have dot plots. When we wanted to have bar charts, we had this widget. We have a widget over here that does box plots directly. So let's just click that. Just like in bar charts, we would select the data we wanted to show for the Y values. Here we say data set because we want to look at the statistics of that data set. So let's just click on this and say, I want to look at the S&P 500 returns and I will immediately get a box plot. Of course, it doesn't look beautiful yet, and that's okay, but for now, we can start working with how we want to format this. I think the easiest thing to do here is first to think about whether we want it to run horizontal or vertical. Sometimes you want it one way, sometimes another. Views defaults to vertical, and under the properties pane, or window, we see that we can change the direction just like we did for bar plots. And so just for our, as for our bar chart, when I change this to horizontal, we now have a horizontal box plot. The next thing that we have underneath this is whisker mode. It defaults to one and a half times the inner quartile range. And so when I look at this box plot, how do I interpret it? This central vertical line is the median value inside of our data set. Then I go 25% towards the end this way and 25% towards the end that way. So inside of here is 50% of all the values we have and they range from the 25% lowest to the 75% highest. This is what we call the interquartile range. Then what we're doing for these whiskers is we're taking that range and multiplying it by one and a half and then drawing a whisker here and here. If we run out of data, we'll just draw a whisker there instead of drawing the entire range. However, if we haven't run out of data, we will draw a whisker. And then everything else that we have that's data, we draw individually as outliers. So I could change this. I could say instead of it being one and a half times the inner quartile range, it's just one standard deviation of our data. And you'll see that shrinks these whiskers in because now I'm basically going plus and minus one standard deviation and I have many more outliers. I could have this be go from the 99 or the 91st to the 9th percentile. And so now I basically just see the 10% of outliers above and below or I could have it go a little bit bigger so that there's just the 8% above and below. The standard is to show one and a half times the inner quartile range. I guess there is one other option, which is min max, and now there'll be no outliers. But again, the standard is to have this one and a half times the inner quartile range, so let's just leave it there for now. We've told it what axes we're plotting against, just like we would with any other plot. We could specify positions if we want and labels, and maybe we'll come back to that at the end of this tutorial video. However, let's think about how to format this so it looks a little bit nicer. Well, the first thing I think about is this X range. To me, it makes it 
me a little nervous to see this bar right at the end because I can't tell whether I'm missing data or not. So let's just widen the X range and again, and let's make it symmetric. So maybe we go from uh, minus one to one. And you might think, why am I thinking about this? Well, this is fractional returns right now instead of percent. If I wanted this to be percent returns, uh, then I would have to multiply the data by 100. Remember when I look at the data we have, it's in terms of fractional returns, not percent returns. So to make it percent, I need to multiply by 100. So I can change the scale to 100. And now I have percent returns and this scale from minus one to one doesn't work anymore. It needs to be minus 100 to 100. Now I have a pretty good looking plot. The other thing here is that I can think about how I want this to be structured. And that's gonna be under the formatting window when I have box plot selected. The fill fraction is similar to what we had when we think about graph. If I make this bigger, it will widen this. And if I had multiple series, they would blend together. So let's have a look at that. How do I add another series? I had not only S&P 500 returns, but I also had other returns. So let's go ahead and add more. You can see that I have an option here that says add another item. If I click on that, I can just simply go in and say, well, instead of S&P 500, let's also add the NASDAQ returns. Now I have a new plot. Instead of just those two, let's add another one and let's say the Dow return. You can see that these run into each other and the reason is because of this fill fraction. If I set this to 0.66, then the space between the boxes is half the space of the actual box up and down. And I could make this much more narrow if I wanted to. All right, but let's go with 0.66. I think that looks nice. Outliers, that's these circles here. I've drawn them as circles. I think that's probably fine, but they could be squares or any other shape that you happen to like. So let's just keep that as circles for right now. The marker size is three point. I think it looks a little big. That's just to my eyes. I like having the outliers kind of small. They are outliers and I kind of want them to be there so people can see them, but they don't need to stand out necessarily. The mean is also marked. So I have the median but I also have the mean. And right now this is a line cross, but it could be anything. I could have chosen it to be instead of a line cross, like a diamond. And it looks okay. I actually kind of like the cross, but it's fine. We'll leave this as a diamond for now. This fill, as you're about to see, controls the fill inside of the boxes. So I could say, I want these boxes to be filled as dark cyan and now I have that fill. The style is solid, although I could have had it been cross-hatched for some reason. I don't know why you would want that, but it could be. Once you have a pattern selected, I guess I'll go back very quickly, you can control that pattern. You can change how transparent it is, how broad these lines are. You can change if the lines are themselves dotted. You could have the spacing between the lines adjusted. And let me go back to solid real quick. And so now I have a two point line width and a spacing of two points, so they run into each other. What if it was four points? You would see that the white line is now the same thickness as the colored line. And then the background could be white as we have here, but it could, or transparent, I guess, as it is here, but we could give it another color like this orange and then unhide it and you'd get stripes that way. Okay, like I said, I don't think we really need patterns though. So let's go back to solid. Here we have the outline. The outline just handles the outline of the interquartile range. So for instance, if I made it red, you would just see red boxes around here. I don't think there's any reason necessarily to have it be a color other than black, but let's just realize that I can make it another color. Let's just go ahead and say black. Our other option would of course be to have it be something like gray if we wanted it to fall into the background. But I think black works well. When we think about the whisker line, it's going to be the vertical sections and also this horizontal section as well as the line that marks the median. And so again, if I change this to red, you'll see all of those change colors. Again, I think there's really no reason to have anything other than black.
And so we'll set it as the foreground color, which is black for us. But we could control its width and its style if for some reason we wanted this to be dotted or something like that. All right, we could control its transparency as well. The next option is the outline on the markers. The markers are going to be the outliers as well as what we're using to mark the median. And so here I could say this outline needs to be, let's say the same, the dark cyan. And now this sort of disappears where this outline of this marker is, and then this matches the fill. Again, I'm not sure I need that to be different. Um, so we'll just leave it as black. We can change what the style of this is. So it could be dashed. Again, not sure why we necessarily would want that here, but we could make it that way. We can change its transparency. If we keep going to the right, I have the marker fill. And so here I could give this, let's say that dark cyan. And now everything looks filled. I could have it be, you saw there was an option for dark red. And it could look like this if I wanted them to have some contrast where these points are versus the fill. I could, of course, give it all sorts of other colors to give it contrast, like orange or anything like that, if I felt that worked well. We don't really have separate control, unfortunately, between the outliers and the mean. And so sometimes what I like to do if I want to create that contrast is to go back and make the outline of this white that makes the outline of the markers disappear uh, when they're outliers. And then I have an outline here, which makes it stand out quite a bit. And then I could even go all the way back and say, I don't want this to be a diamond, but I want it to be something like that X that we started with. And now I have a white element here and an orange element there. And that's a nice way to give some contrast. And so now we're done. We've sh we have explored all the options we have here. If we go back to the main, you could also choose to not show things like what the mean is. And if you didn't want to have the mean, the easiest way is to just to say no marker. And now we don't have the mean shown anymore. Let's have that come back and let's go back down and make this a line cross. The last thing I'd say for something like a box plot is that the Y axis really doesn't contain any information. I don't need this here. It was just giving us something to plot these against. And so I can just go in and say hide. And now I have that missing. Okay, what else might we want to do? Well, we don't know which one of these is which, so we could add in labels using the label widget. The other is that we might want them to be different colors, but we didn't really see an option for that here. So what would we need to do in that case? The easiest way, unfortunately, is to use a grid system and then to put the box plot inside the grid system. And once we have the box plot inside the grid system as a graph, then we can make several copies of this, let's say, and have the grid system have two rows and one column and then this box plot, we would get rid of the NASDAQ and the Dow. And then in this box plot, we would get rid of the S&P 500 and the Dow. And now I have one that shows me the NASDAQ returns and one that shows me the S&P 500 returns. And I have now control separately over the coloration. And so now I could go in and say, instead of dark cyan, I want this one to be dark red. And now they look different. I could go back to the grid system and say zero margins, and then they're on top of each other. I go to this graph and I say, hide this outline, hide that outline. I don't need, I go to this graph, I say, I don't need to see the X axis. And then this grid system needs to have a bottom margin of let's say two centimeters. And now I have something where I have individual control by making an individual graph for each thing and putting it inside of a grid system. So if you want to control the coloration separately, that's how you would do it. Okay, and I think with that, we now know how to make box plots. We know what parameters we have control over for them. We even know how to make several different box plots where we control the coloration individually using the grid system. And so you should be ready to go out and make lots of different box plots showing and comparing distributions of data. So with that, go out and have fun doing that.